Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. Thank you for choosing to spend a little time with us during our Sunday morning worship experience. And I pray that you will receive something that will help you on your future journey in life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for giving us so much to be thankful for, even in times like the one in which we're living with uh, the uh, spread of the COVID-19 virus. And we thank you for keeping us in it and taking us through it uh, and using it to perfect us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, our text for today uh, or our subject for today is Thanksgiving as a part of true worship. Thanksgiving as a part of true worship. Our text is found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 through 19. Uh, verse uh, 16 says, rejoice always. Uh, verse 17, pray without ceasing. Verse 18, thanks, give, it, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And then uh, don't quench the Holy Spirit is verse uh, 19. Don't quench the Holy Spirit. So again, uh, we're talking about Thanksgiving as a part of true worship. Now, family worship is the emphasis of the text uh, that we've read, and uh, worship is the most important activity for any local church family. Ministry must flow out of worship. Otherwise, it becomes busy activities without power and without heart. There may be results, but they will not glorify God or really last. Many church services lack in any emphasis on true worship and are more like religious entertainment, catering to the appetite of the congregation. And when this happens, we tend to go through the motion of worshiping God, but our focus is directed to everything and everyone but God. I met a pastor the other day, and he remembered that uh, back in the day, uh, Mount Sinai in Morning View uh, was known for their great choirs the great singing abilities of the choirs. And he stated that there was only one uh, choir that topped Mount, Mount Sinai and Morning View's choir, and that was uh, Mount Moriah's choir, choir. It's better to be known for what we do uh, that is true worship, uh, since that's supposed to be why we gather in the first place, for God's glory and not our own glory. Paul named the various elements that make up the worship ministry in the church, and true and sincere worship requires four ingredients that are mentioned in the text. The first one is rejoice. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 says, Rejoice always. There's a repetitiveness in that statement. Rejoice always. Continue to, to rejoice. Uh, now, Philippians chapter 4, verse 4 says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. In other words, uh, rejoicing is not supposed to be something that, that just happens that we control. Uh, rejoicing should be a response of ours based upon the goodness of the Lord. And if the Lord has been good to you, you ought to rejoice instead of being all sad and ho-hum. Uh, the happy state that results from knowing God and serving him is rejoicing. And, and, and notice that that definition does not indicate us uh, heavily on what God has done for you as it does in knowing God and serving God. That's where our rejoicing should come from, not in, in what he has given us or blessed us with, but the mere fact that we know him and we are allowed to serve him. That's where the happy results 
come from. Rejoice means to spend more time rejoicing or repeatedly rejoicing, and it doesn't mean that we are to go through life doing nothing but joying. I'm reading a book titled The Cast in which uh, slave owners way back uh, in the other day were required by their slave masters to look happy, to smile, and, 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 and act as though they were happy at some of the things that their slave master was doing for them. For instance, uh, selling their mates or selling their children uh, to another plantation owner. They were required to uh, give the appearance, that, and, 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 and it wasn't something that they could just, just uh, fake they had to genuinely convince their slave masters that they were happy at the decision that their master was uh, making concerning their lives. Uh, the, to to uh, burst into gaiety when a loved one has died could cause a bystander to think that we were losing our minds. Even to get shot and you start laughing about it could cause people to think that you are going into hysteria. The idea is to be a person uh, that people might say that you are happy about everything. Uh, and, and you're happy every time I see you. That's the kind of... Uh, response that we want people to give us when we rejoice uh, and rejoice and and rejoice when when not that we go around just laughing and you know uh, we would most likely feel stupid about ourselves if we were the only one in our room well as I'm saying that there are times when I'm the only one in the room and I rejoice when I just think about the goodness of the Lord. But but uh, but you, there are some circumstances where rejoicing just doesn't fit that occasion, and we have to learn that that God is not saying that we are to rejoice every minute of the day. You know, you get out of bed rejoicing. You know, after a while, that's going to seem a little bit of phony. But when you think about the goodness of the Lord, and as you attempt to worship him and praise him, uh, uh, rejoicing should come forth. When you, think about, uh, when you think about it, God is continually giving us something to rejoice about. Hallelujah. And even though we make the statement, especially in the church uh, worship settings, if I had a thousand tongues, I'd use them all thanking you, Lord. Even then, we couldn't thank Jesus or the Holy Spirit for all that he does for us. So, so don't tr try to make rejoicing uh, something that you do in impossible situations. God wants us to learn to rejoice uh, even in sorrow sometimes. But but your rejoicing ought to be in such a way that it teaches others to rejoice. You, you don't have to always grumble and complain when rejoicing can be an alternative. Uh, I'm thanking the Lord uh, keeps on blessing us over and over. And, and as I think about the fact that he does it, it brings about joy in my heart. Uh, I can work at showing my appreciation by, by replacing my grumbling and complaining with rejoicing that he keeps on keeping his promise. And he never leaves us nor forsakes us. That's one of the great promises of God. So rejoice always. A second uh, ingredient that uh, is very important is prayer. Pray. Verse 17 of our text says, pray without ceasing. Prayer was very important in the early church. And you can check out 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1 through 6, and Acts chapter 1, verse 
13 through 14 and chapter 4, verse 23. That gives us a verification that uh, the early church was prayerful. When, when the early church got together, it was for breaking bread and praying. And I paused there for a minute uh, on a pur for a purpose. It was a high and holy experience when the church united in prayer. Today, we, we, we call someone to lead prayer, and we have no idea whether that uh, person is a believer or even in fellowship with God. In some churches, there are two or three people who monopolize the prayer meetings when prayer meetings should be something that it's an opportunity for all to grow. It should be something that everybody in the congregation participates in, not just somebody that's known to pray, pray good or uh, 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 to have an eloquent prayer. If we are led by the Holy Spirit, as in Jude uh, verse 20, we will experience unity and freedom in our praying, and God will answer those type of prayers. Pray without ceasing does not mean that we must always be mumbling a prayer. The word uh, means constantly recurring. Praying without ceasing means constantly recurring, not constantly occurring, but constantly recurring. We are to keep the receiver off the hook. And, and, and that statement has, ha, has taken me a long ways in my prayer life uh, in, in the week that I've been working on this sermon. So we are to keep like the, like keep the receiver off the hook, our telephone receiver, and, and, and uh, uh, just be ready at any time when, when, when something comes into our heart to to talk to the Lord about, and, and you ought to do more than having a uh, request list of um, uh, what we want God to do for us. We ought to just, 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 just without having to call, without having to dial him up and tell him what we want, we ought to call just, just, just like the receiver is off the hook, we ought to just that just just uh, look in his direction. You and that can be in any direction, but but talk to God, and, and 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 convey to him something that you just realized that just occurred to you that God has already done for you, and being in touch with God so that our praying is a part of a long conversation with the Lord. So learn to leave the receiver off the hook and just talk to him continually. Uh, uh, God knows the desires of our heart, uh, so we don't have to inform him of, of what we need. Uh, Sometimes, in some occasions, it is good to make our request known unto the Lord. But not all the time. God wants to hear us uh uh, sometime when we don't want him to do something for us, when we're not expecting something in return, we, we ought to be able to, to, to pray or talk to God and let him know that something that he's already done, now you realize that he did it for you. And, and it was nobody but the Lord. And, and, and God will respond to those desires uh, like in, 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 in Luke uh, chapter 37, he gives us the desires of our heart. And he responds to those desires even when our voices may be silent. Luke uh, chapter 21 verse 36 says, but stay awake at all times praying that you may have strength to escape all these things that are going to take place, going to take place. That, that's being prepared for the future, what could happen, what might happen. Instead of spending the amount of time that we do 
worrying about what might happen, what could happen in life. Just spend some time telling the Lord uh, that you uh, are basically putting it all in his hands. You are uh, 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 counting on him to take care of you, to protect you, to provide for you. So uh, in Romans chapter 12, verse 12 says, rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, and be constant in prayer. Now, again, that does not mean that you go around 24-7 mumbling a prayer. But prayer ought to be recurring. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 18 says, praying at all time in the Spirit and allow the Holy Spirit to, 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 to connect with you in your prayer and talk to God. And if you would learn to do that, you'll find that a lot of the stuff that you pray to God about, a lot of this long want list or to-do list for God, you'll find yourself uh, asking God to help you to be content in whatever state you find yourself. You'll find yourself acting, asking God to give you the strength to do his will, not your will. Uh, so, so praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication to that end, keep alert and all perseverance making supplications for all saints, not just for yourself. When you thank God, you, are, you need, you, you, you'll be amazed at the number of your blessings that will increase when you thank God for what he does for somebody else. You ought to get to be growing to the point where you thank God for what he do for people you don't like. Colossians chapter four, verse two says, uh, uh, it gives uh, us further instructions to continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful with all thanksgiving. That's the English standard version. And, 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 and then the third ingredient is thanks. Now, thanksgiving and praise go together. They work seamlessly. Uh, uh, perpetual thanksgiving is prayer without ceasing, never ending, without end, abiding. Uh, that, that means prayer moves into your life and 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 it's it's there all the time. It doesn't just visit, but it's there all the time. And, and and the Holy Spirit moves into our lives, abides in us. And if prayer abides in us, then the Holy Spirit got something to work for work with. Be constant, enduring, deathless. That's how we are to to be thankful and praise God. Our thankfulness ought to be unfading. It ought to be persistent. It ought to be occurring repeatedly, so frequent as to seem endless and uninterrupted. Thanksgiving is a, also a vital element of our worship experience. Thanksgiving is a form of praise. Praise is a word that derived from the Latin uh, language uh, uh, and means Pretium, uh, pre, pretium, that's it. That's how to pronounce it. Pretium, spelled P-R-E-T-I-U-M. And it means price or value. So it can be defined mostly as an ascription or an acknowledgement of the value of God in our life. What is he worth to us? When our thanksgiving and our praise uh, translates into a price or God's value to it, then we are ascribing through worship, we are acknowledging through worship his worthness to us. It, it is typified by the doxology of God or to God and to the Lamb of God. 
O Lamb of God, thou art worthy of praise. And this is inspired by a sense of uh, their worthiness to be adored. Now, praise of God is a major theme throughout the Bible. Thanksgiving is a major theme throughout the Bible. And it is appropriate to respond to, uh, it's it's an appropriate response of God's creature to his majesty and his saving deeds to us. So, so, so praise and thanksgiving is an appropriate, it's the thing for us to do, to respond to God. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a response that God expects of his creatures, us, to his majesty and to his saving uh, deeds to us on our behalf. We use psalms and hymns and spiritual songs as stated in Ephesians 5, 19, to express our love and our gratitude to the Lord. Ephesians, that, say, that verse that I just mentioned, Ephesians 5, 19 said, talk with each other much about the Lord, quoting psalms and hymns and singing praises and, and sacred songs, making music in your heart to the Lord. We ought to we we ought to 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 have a song in our heart praising the Lord. If we meet our neighbor at the fence and talk to him for a while, the Lord's name and His goodness ought to come up of how thankful we are and how we praise His holy name. Praise should be something that uh, that 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 just comes out spontaneously, without any planning. And thanksgiving should be likewise. As we grow in our application of the word of God, we must also grow in our expression of thanksgiving and praise. Can I say that again? As we grow in our application and doing of the word of God, we must also grow in our expression of praise and thanksgiving, because the two go together. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, remember what Christ taught you and let his words enrich your lives and make you wise. Teach them to each other and sing them out in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, saying, singing to the Lord with thankful heart. In other words, when we get together, when all of God's children, not in heaven, but while we're still down here on these mundane shores, in this troubled world, in these perilous times, these dangerous times, we ought to sing praises to the Lord. And, 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 and if you live in a state where songs of praise come up in your heart out of nowhere, unexpectedly, while it's just you and the Lord, then it would be much easier for us to join in when the congregation get together and sing praises to the Lord. Now, the last ingredient is not grieving the Holy Spirit. The last important element of worship, family worship, and and, and that's at home, that's uh, at, the, at where where the church gathers, don't quench the Holy Spirit. Verse nineteen says, "Do not quench the Holy Spirit." Now, non-believers resist the Holy Spirit by rejecting the truth that the Holy Spirit is trying to lead them into about Jesus Christ or when the Holy Spirit is trying to lead them like he did uh, uh, Cornelius in his household, like he led Cornelius to, or the angel did, uh, uh, led Cornelius to send for Peter to bring him word of the good news, the gospel. Now, believers quench the Holy Spirit 
by resisting doing what the Holy Spirit is trying to lead us to do. Like Peter's uh, case in that same scenario with Cornelius. Peter could have said, I'm not going to this uh, Cornelius' house and share with him the gospel because he's not a Jew. But the Holy Spirit or God had already given Peter a lesson and given him a reason to go or to not resist the Holy Spirit leadership. Now, now another way of, of thinking about quenching the Holy Spirit is to make his job or his work difficult. Sometimes the Holy Spirit leads us to, to rejoice or tries to, and we might resist it. Or he might re lead us to prayer, but trying to lead us to pray, and we resist. If a local church is growing in grace, the members will want to learn new hymns in order to give God praise. But if the heart and the head do not keep pace with each other, Christian worship becomes either juvenile or childish or hypocritical or hypocritical. It's amazing how rejoicing and prayer and thanksgiving works so smoothly together. We could have worship experiences that would be so much more fulfilling and meaningful if we would just learn to follow these four things. Rejoicing, praying without ceasing, rejoicing always, and uh, being thankful or praising God continually and not grieving the Holy Spirit will take our worship a long way. And my prayer already, it's, it's the last part of, of uh, November. We got December to go, but I'm praying throughout this period that we will start the new year with sincere worship by using these four ingredients in our worship experience. And that's all I've got. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, ensure that your word goes where you send it and accomplishes the purpose that you sent it to accomplish in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I hope you realize that the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, cases are on the increase. They are growing greatly right now. And a lot of people have become complacent because they haven't caught it yet or caught it and survived it. But it's still time to live life as though you realize the realness of COVID-19. Not that you have to be fearful, but you ought to be wise and understand the value of your life and the value of others' lives. So wear your mask, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often so that we all will be around to go into 2021 healthy. Thank you again for joining us. I realize that you did have other options, but you chose to spend this time with us. And I pray that you will realize uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit that your time has been well spent. So long.